Hello, folks. Uh, I have the pleasure of introducing our final keynote of the day. And I've had actually the pleasure to do this before uh, with uh, Mitch Joel. And uh, I absolutely enjoy seeing him speak every time he does speak. Uh, I've seen it twice now. And he's a very engaging, interactive speaker. He knows his stuff. Um, and it's one of those presentations that you do not, you don't, basically it's done before you realize, and you're like, wow, I had no idea that 45 minutes could go that fast, truly. Uh, I was going to, I had a list of things that Mitch Joel has done. It's actually probably easier to say, what hasn't Mitch done? from that perspective, but he is the president of uh, Twist Image, or if you're in Canada or in Quebec, because that's where he's located, Twist Image. Um, he has an uh, office in Montreal and Toronto. He has 130 employees. Uh, they have clients all around the world. Mitch himself is a uh, best-selling author of a book, uh, six, uh, six Pixels of Jeez. Six Pixels of Separation. I was thinking of Kevin Bacon there for a second. Um, and also a blog of the same name, uh, which is a top 25 blog on the Ad Age Power 150. Um, Mitch has been on the stage with the likes of Bill Clinton and uh, Tony Robbins and uh, Dr. Phil. And I don't know if you're being interviewed by Dr. Phil, but yeah. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to uh, have, give a great, warm uh, Boston welcome to Mitch Joel. <clears throat> yeah, also a very happy customer of Radiant 6, too. They're a great, great brand. Um, so welcome, everyone. It's been actually an amazing day. I was telling David that normally when you do events, you sort of come in and you speak and you feel like you're the dancing monkey, right? You're just hired to speak to the audience and then you sort of go. But this is one of those events where I've been participating and active and I look forward to tomorrow, too. So thank you so much for the invitation. I'm excited to be here. Um, one of the things I get called a lot is a futurist, which is sort of a funny title because I never really considered myself a technologist or a futurist, really. And the idea of being a futurist is sort of strange in and of itself, as if you could, as if anyone could predict the future, right? Like if I could predict the future, I, well, I wouldn't be here, right? We would be doing other sort of really cool things, wouldn't we? Um, but what I like to tell people is that I'm more of a presentist. And I think it's an important thing to think about as a marketing professional or someone who's even looking at the communication space. Think of yourself as a presentist. Because I believe what's presently happening in business and social media and how people are connecting is fundamentally changing everything we know about business. Uh, Radian 6's business with Salesforce, I think, is very indicative of that shift that we're seeing right now. And so it's really important for all of us here to think very, very differently about what it is consumers do and how they connect. And so with my time, what I'd like to do is really focus on the present and what this means to you and your business. So I thought instead of looking at the standard things people will look like, like uh, people like to say, like, consumers will do this or consumers might do that, what I thought I would do is share with you what consumers are actually doing. Some of them are personal stories, some of them are just things sort of out there in the open, but they're really powerful and they really signify to me and hopefully to you as a marketing communications professional, business development person, that the world really is changing in a dramatic way. So here's my first tale of commerce. This is uh, Sam Decker. Sam is the former chief marketing officer for a company called Bizarre Voice. I'm sure some of you are familiar with. Bizarre Voice does the third party auditing of customer reviews. And at the time, now Sam's moved on, he's at this company called Mass Relevance, but at the time, Sam is the chief marketing officer for Bizarre Voice, and he's invited to come to Chicago to speak at an event uh, for this man. This is Andy Cernovitz. Some of you may know Andy. Andy is the founder of the Word of Mouth Marketing Association. And Andy's running this event in Chicago called uh, Word of Mouth Super Genius. So he invites me to come along and speak as well. I like to call this picture uh, Emo Mitch. That's my, my title of that picture. And um, I'm, I'm never sad, so it's a sort of joking picture. Uh, and you might notice a trend between Sam and Andy and myself. If you sort of line us all up, um, I think you can sort of feel where I'm going with this. You can sort of like <laughs> go right into like the... I always joke that if Sam were, Ju if, uh, if Sam were Jewish, it would be Jew Man Group, right? It would be perfect. Be, um, but he's not. Um, you know how us girls are when we get together and we start talking about makeup and our hair and our clothes and all those things, right? And so the three of us are having dinner prior to this event and Andy breaks out the question, you know, how do you shave? Do you shave or do you buzz? Now my immediate answer back was, you're talking about my head, I hope, right? I wanted to just put it. 
I go, actually, you can tell I shave. I don't buzz it. I, I, just, I just shave it. Uh, and Sam goes, I buzz it. And Andy's like, I'm going to save your marriage. And Sam's like, what do you mean? He goes, you need to go out and get yourself this. And Sam's like, why? He goes, see, this buzzer has a little vacuum cleaner in it. And so when you're trimming your head or your goatee or whatever the places you're putting this thing, um, the hair will suck into the thing and won't go all over the sink or toilet or, or floor. And so when your wife or girlfriend walk into the bathroom, they won't want to immediately throw up and then divorce you, right? It's like, if you're female, you're obviously feeling exactly what's going on here, right? And so what does is, what is the, the consumer look like in that scenario, right? The consumer usually, you know, 7 o'clock in the evening in a, in a nice restaurant goes, ah, oh, I should make note of what that is. And if I should happen to walk into a Macy's or a Kohl's, I should happen to walk by uh, the shaving department or the electronics department and see it, I will remember, oh yeah, I wonder if they have that buzzer that may in fact save my marriage and keep all the pubes from running all over my house, right? <laughs> so uh, what happens in this instance actually is not that. What does the new consumer look like? Well, well Sam is an Amazon Prime member. Are you all familiar with Amazon Prime? So for about 80 bucks, you become a member of Prime. And the two biggest things that make Prime so interesting from my perspective is, one, as soon as you buy something, it's shipped to you as quickly as they can physically ship it to you. So if you live in a big city, uh, I've heard in Boston it works quite well too, where you can order something really early in the morning, it might even be there by the afternoon, so it's pretty quick. But the bigger thing it does is you can return anything, no questions asked, sort of like the Zappos model, right? Think about what that has done to the consumer. Essentially, what Amazon has done is they've made every single thing you purchase an impulse buy. That's dramatic. I mean, you can order furniture for your backyard, have it set up, look at it and go, nah, send it back, right? No problems, you don't have to load it into the, tr nothing. It just, you just, they'll come and they'll just take it away. So that's really, really powerful, right? So he's a member of Amazon Prime and he's sitting there, of course, with his iPhone 3G at the time, I guess it was, or 3GS, and he's got his Amazon app. And so as Andy is telling Sam about this amazing razor that's going to save his marriage, he's ordered it. And so by the time he gets home the next day, in, uh, he lives in Austin, he'll have it and he can test it and he can decide if in fact this is going to save his marriage or not or if he wants to send it back. That's the new consumer. And while you may think that's not the average consumer, it is very much the new consumer. And the reason I say it's the new consumer is because we get lost sometimes in our own business malarkey. We tend to think that this is the anomaly and won't become the sort of going forward trend. But I believe if you're here at a Radiant 6 conference like this, you understand at its fundamental level how quickly we're shifting and how this is going to become much more commonplace if it's not already commonplace in our world for the products we sell. And so again, forget the crystal balls and forget the future, but let's really do a reality check. Let's look at really where we're at. This is where our industry is at. This is where marketers are at. So one of the things I do back in Canada, very far from here, it's like a whole 45 minute flight, um, I sit as the vice chair for the Canadian Marketing Association. And like any association over the past couple of years, it's struggled, and it's struggled primarily because of the recession. It's harder to get brands to renew their memberships, et cetera, et cetera. And what we have is this big national conference that I'm the chair of, and the night before is a very exclusive event where about 100 to 150 of the top marketers are invited to this very private dinner for the president and CEO. And there's usually a wild, awesome keynote speaker. They do you know, 20, 30 minutes of remarks, and it's a big schmooze fest, really good networking, et cetera, et cetera. So I get a call from the president and CEO of the association who says, you know, we're considering canceling it because it'll save money for the budget, and uh, we don't have any money, and we've got to sort of push through this. Now, the board wisely decided to go forward with the dinner, but then there was a question as to whether or not we would have the keynote speaker. And so the CEO calls me again and says, what do you think? I said, you know, before we go canceling it, we've got this convention coming up for a couple days. I've, I've actually asked many of the speakers to come and speak for the, 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 you know, the, our members. Let me see if one of them will give some comments to the audience. So the first person I thought of is a close friend of mine who has one of the coolest job titles in the world. Um, his job title is Analytics Evangelist Google. And what Avinash Kaushik gets to do is he gets to speak to brands like yours about things you should be measuring, not just Google Analytics, but just the analytics of what your world needs to look like and how to measure it. And so if you've never seen Avinash Kaushik speak, head over to YouTube, do a search for him and watch him. He's an awesome speaker and he's a brilliant marketer. 
And as he's giving his remarks, you can see the, uh, you know, the sort of small, intimate crowd is getting really into it. And we move to a question and answer period. And so senior marketer in the back of the room raises his hand from a retailer. And he says, you know, Avinash, I believe everything you're saying about this whole Web 2.0 and social media. We tried it. We hired a 24-year-old person just out of university. We brought them in. They had tattoos, earrings. They really looked the part. It was perfect. You know where I'm going with this, right? And we put them in charge of everything. They were in charge of Facebook, of YouTube, of Twitter, and everything, and pff, nothing. Now, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, these changes are so huge and so dramatic. Are you really telling me that you took a 24-year-old and put them out by themselves in charge of all this? It's crazy. I mean, I can understand if the business model was around how to roll the ultimate spliff, right? Put that person in charge of it, right? We need to set up like an awesome beer pong contest. Put them in charge of it. Everything to do with how people are connecting, and really, what kind of results were you expecting? But this is what Avinash told the audience. He said, the web has been around forever, and yet it is not in the blood of the executives who staff the top echelons of companies. Make no mistake about it. They're smart, they're successful, and they want to do better. But the web is such a paradigm shift that if it's not in your blood, it is very difficult for you to imagine its power and how to use it for good. How do you demand innovation, creativity, and radical rethink if you can't even imagine it? Awesome, right? It's like, what a great way to make people understand why we are in this position. See, we've been working at this for over two decades. Uh, the social web is coming up to being over 10 years old. That's over a decade. And yet the problem is people make the misassumption that you need to be young and someone who's on Facebook to understand how this works. The, that is so stupid, right? That's like turning me into an electrician because I turn on lights a lot. Right? It's insane. It's crazy to think about it, right? But that's exactly what's happened. It's like, well, you're on Facebook. You must know how to leverage this as a business channel for a huge organization. Of course. I mean, go ahead. Run with it, right? You have a marketing degree. It makes sense. We have to change our perceptions. And the idea is not to hire and initiate a bunch of digital natives into your organization. The idea is for you to get a transfusion. The idea for you is to spend time at conferences like this, to work with platforms like Gradient 6, to speak to people like myself, and to understand that primarily, the way in which your consumer is interacting with your brand is happening in a digital first world. The brands that are embracing it, primarily the brands that are in this room actually, are starting to see the light and the transition of this new consumer. And it's been so dramatic. How dramatic? It's dramatic. Last quarter, the last quarter of last year, there were more smartphones sold than PCs. Hmm, that's interesting. You think that's going to change? You think that number's going to go up and up and up? Of course it is. We are in this insane transition. This idea of mobile commerce and people having this information with them everywhere is going to make e-commerce look like a joke. And so while your brands are trying to figure out your e-commerce and your attribution and your social media monitoring and all this, I'm here to say the world is even moving faster than that right now. That is baseline from a couple years ago. You're going to need to be dealing with not people at fixed locations, but people having access to this information and engaging with it anywhere and everywhere. And so you're familiar with these devices and what they look like. I have an amazingly funny life where every like three months or so, my wife will walk over to me and she'll be like, what do you do for a living? <laughs> like you are just always on Facebook and YouTube, right? And I'm like, shut up, don't screw this up. Like, I, you know, <laughs> you know, you got a nice house, couple cars, leave me alone. You know? But, right? And so one day we're having this brunch at our house and, and one of her friends comes over and he's like, you know, have you seen this thing? Have you seen this? And I'm like, does nobody know what I do for a living here? Really? I mean, everyone just <laughs> wants to eat my food and hang out in my cool place. And he goes, no, no, I know you know what an iPhone is, but have you seen this application called SnapTel? And at the time I hadn't seen SnapTel. So he turns on the, the SnapTel app and what it does is it initiates the camera, looks around my living room, sees the coffee table, takes a picture of a book that's there holds it up, obviously the software is able to recognize what the book is. So you see the picture, the cover, the title, the author, et cetera, et cetera. But then what you also see is how much you can buy it for online in multiple places from most expensive to, from, sorry, from cheapest to most expensive. It also shows you all the reviews online from places like the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal. And then it shows you all the reviews you guys have posted in places like Amazon or Walmart, wherever. But then it also shows you how physically close you are to a store and how many copies they have of it in stock. We are talking about such dramatic shifts in the consumer's access to this information that it's almost paralyzing for some brands to realize. Think about what the consumer looks like when they can walk into Best Buy, take a picture of a Blu-ray DVD player, walk over to the manager and go, I can get the 